uh, constitutional isomers are the isomers uh, have a different bonding linkage. Okay, they are not the same. They have the same formula, but a completely bonding linkage. They are different compounds, different physical chemical properties. And uh, so hexane, by the way, if you, uh, by moving the atoms around, building isomers, there are five constitutional isomers for the hexanes. Uh, for all the structures, you can easily find online, and uh, there are many articles, pictures, shows you that all the isomers, five constitute isomers. And to, to build isomers, I think I mentioned before, uh, it is about take away from the, take away the carbon from the main chain, the longest chain, and keep making the longest chain shorter and shorter. So that way you have three more substituent you can attach to whatever position. And based on the naming, you can differentiate, are they the same compound or different compound? Okay, so that's about a constitution isomer. These two are the different. This is a normal, the N-hexane, and this is a, a two methyl pentane. And so you can see the methyl and pentane add together six carbons, same compounds. And so the number of uh, constitution isomers, it looks roughly exponential. But there are actually, there's no mathematical equation you can predict. And these are the number of constitutional isomers. Uh, start from methane, ethane, propane have no isomers. There's only one number, number of structures. And start from the um, butane, we have a normal butane or two methyl propane. So you have two compounds. Same formula, different structures. And as you have more and more columns, the number of isomers increase very, very dramatically. Okay, so this is a humongous number. Trillions and trillions of uh, isomers for 40 carbons. And uh, <clears throat> isomers, uh, to realize are the isomers or not, is the simplest way is just to use a name. It's use a naming rule properly, and if they have the same name, then they are the same compound. And if they end up different names, and then that'll be the different compound. That would be the most reliable, use, and, use naming to find out. Use naming to find out. If you have, or have the organic molecule model kit, yeah, use the uh, model kit and try to rotate the, the bonds. And so for example, these two molecules <clears throat> look very different, but if you name the compound, that is a three methyl pentane, both are three methyl pentane, so that's the same compound, no difference. How you can, um, convert this into that, you basically rotate this bond. After rotate, and then you rotate the whole molecule a little degrees like this, then you get the molecule, just for example. Their organic molecules chemistry is very flexible. You are dealing with a very flexible structure. So keep your mind flexible, okay? So if you're not quite flexible yet, practice with a kit and do the Zappen homework. And also, um, the most reliable is the user name, okay? The stability of the isomers uh, from the combustion, from the heat of combustion, we can find out the enthalpy formation for uh, each compound. Okay, this is what you learn in the uh, one, the second semester or first semester general chemistry. Use the heat of combustion to find out enthalpy formation, delta HF. So with this structure, the, uh, what do we find out from this heat of combustion? The normal propane, no branches, have the highest heat of, um, the enthalpy heat of, um, the heat of combustion, which means uh, the normal, no non-branched hex uh, octane has the highest energy. The more branches among the isomers, the lower uh, enthalpy of uh, combustion, which means the more stable molecules. So this is a fact. Uh, this trend might be you need to memorize it, but I wouldn't really worry too much. Neumann projections. This is the, the best way to explain this is to have an organic molecule, the model in front of you, holding your hands, and make sure the um, all the carbons are the tetrahedral, and you rotate the molecule. And so this is the uh, a ethane with six hydrogens. And if you start from this, this is the 
uh, the 3D line structure. The wedge means close to me, dash means away from me, and so we have a molecule like this. This molecule rotate, it rotate um, counter counterclockwise. Okay, counterclockwise. We look from above counterclockwise. And that molecule, it becomes this. The red one becomes close to you, and the blue far away because of rotation. Okay. And after rotation, uh, so you can see the uh, these three hydrogens. You have one hydrogen on 12 o'clock, and this is on four, this one on eight, eight o'clock. The blue ones uh, will be far away from me. And um, so if you, this kind of structure, how to draw it on the, uh, a more convenient way, if you look from here, okay, you put eyes here, and then let the red hydrogen close to you, and then you treat this bond using the white circle, this bond, the white circle, then that will become that we call it Newman projection structure. Okay, so that basically shows you how to do that. Keep your eyes close to the red hydrogens, and then you will see. So this structure becomes this. To take some practice, but it's kind of a straightforward. Whichever 12 o'clock hydrogen stay on 12 o'clock. And this hydrogen, blue hydrogen on the six o'clock, stay on the six. And those blue hydrogens are far away from me. So those are um, those hydrogens are behind the white circle. This white circle you can treat as a two carbons, uh, two carbons. There's a one carbon, there's one carbon. Make these two. Uh, superimpose each other or overlap, eclipse, fully eclipse. So you can, if you use the eclipse, this is the, uh, let's say the solar eclipse. This is the Earth and this is Sun. And when the Earth fully blocks the Sun and you get this kind of a uh, layout and you will see the Earth only, the Sun, which is the other carbon, you cannot see. And so that's Newman projection. Newman projection is a language, is organic chemistry uh, language, and you should be very familiar with this. So the Zaplin gives you a lot of time, a lot of chance to practice. And our quiz test asks some questions, quite a bit of questions about the, this kind of structures. Okay, so that's how the circles correspond. The one that's close to you, it is, uh, uh, yeah, so the Newman projection. Okay, draw Newman projection for the following molecules. Uh, when you do this, remember you should think about where are the missing hydrogens. Okay, so those atoms show in the line structure only the heavy atoms, no hydrogens. So before you draw that, uh, you should be aware there will be a, since it is 3D line structure, there's one hydrogen here, and there's another hydrogen. And with this carbon, you have one chlorine. This is a, a methyl group, okay, methyl group. These are the, met by default, methyl group. And so if you see the line, just simple line, not wedge dash, that means it's in the paper, in the plane. And so with this carbon, you have uh, two lines in the plane and one's in dash. So what is missing is the wedge. The wedge, um, the wedge should be, And the atom that is in the wedge, it should be the hydrogen because hydrogen we don't see. So that's your first label, the atoms that is missing. And so uh, when you see the two lines, two just a plain lines, simple line, means you have uh, these two carbon, this is a carbon massive group, and this carbon are in the plane, in the paper. And uh, because tetrahedral, you have uh, two things are on the, uh, out of the paper, out of the plane. One is a wedge, hydrogen, and the other one is dash, hydrogen, okay? So once you know each atom, which is a wedge, and then you can draw the, um, this carbon will be close to you. This carbon will be away from me. And uh, whichever, the, uh, since you are here, this chlorine will be on the 12 o'clock. And this methyl group is on the paper, and the same, in the same plane as my eyes. So that would be the six o'clock. This would be six o'clock, and this would be 12 o'clock atoms. And then you can just draw the structure, circles. 
And so this atom close to me, you have a messy group uh, down under six o'clock. So put it down. That would be the messy group. And then what's on here are the hydrogens, okay, two hydrogens. The angle, remember, is trigonal planar uh, from this perspective. Okay, it'd be very helpful if you label which hydrogen is which. Okay, this is the wet hydrogen. Wet hydrogen, hydrogen A. After you rotate, the hydrogen should be on my right. So this is the A hydrogen. This is the, the other hydrogen, is the, is the dash hydrogen. Okay, this is that hydrogen. So that is uh, what you can see the uh, carbon in front of me, close to me. Okay, what about the, what about this uh, other carbon? The other carbon is away from me with chlorine on the 12 o'clock. So chlorine is here. And this hydrogen, because I rotate the whole thing counterclockwise, counterclockwise, this hydrogen should be on my right hand. It should be this one. And this dash, which, which is the massive group, will be on the other side. Okay, so take some time to get used to. Um, it's kind of art. It's a geometric precision. Draw a very nice symmetrical picture. Straight line, and it's pretty straightforward. Okay, next one. Oh boy, this guy is a uh, look from under what he's looking. Okay, I think this, this person is actually seeing like this. The body like that. He's looking um, upside down a little structure. Good practice. If you draw, if you draw the um, the first structures between the uh, along three and two atoms, three and two. So um, three and two. How the name is? This is number one column. This is number one column. Position two. This is about naming. Okay, naming order. This is carbon number four. So they draw the structures as along three and two, which means uh, carbon three is the first one close to you. Carbon two is away from you. And then you draw this uh, Newman projection. What about draw Newman projection along the um, two to three? Two to three means you can look, this is one close to you. And this is one away from me. And so you start from the same same way. You draw the missing hydrogens. And this is a methyl group, don't forget that. And this uh, chlorine is in the plane line. That means it is in the paper, in the plane. This methyl group is away from me. So the missing, it is a dash. The dash, it should be the hydrogen. I'm sorry, the, oh yeah, the dash, which? Which, where is the hydrogen? That is a methyl group. So that's what we should look at. And then um, we our eyes like this, um, with eyes like this, then this chlorine should be on the six o'clock, and this will be on the eight o'clock, because uh, on my left hand side, this methyl group, okay, if you look from this direction, it'd be on my right hand side. So that is. Uh, I draw the same circle. Chlorines on the 12 o'clock. Chlorine 12 o'clock. The hydrogens on my left hand. Messy group on my right. Okay. And then uh, this carbon is away from me, and you have two hydrogens on top. One messy down under the six o'clock. So you draw the messy group first and then the two hydrogens. Okay, so that's basically the same molecule draw the Newman structure from two different angles. Basically, they are opposite angles, and they looks like that. There's another way to consider this. It is basically with this Newman structure, you rotate 180 degrees um, clockwise. So basically, whatever in the backward moves to the front, and those in the front, went to the back. And uh, so with a 3D transition, you can also draw the um, human projection just like this. So take some imagination, but you can do that. So that's about human projections. Okay. 
in the uh, alkane, the alkane molecule have the carbon-carbon single bond. And so along the carbon-carbon single bond, there's a f almost free rotation, unless there's a big chunky substituents uh, get in the way of the rotation. And so because the rotation along the carbon atom uh, is fairly free, because there's no pi bond, the uh, atoms on the two carbon can adapt different angles. So this is the, uh, we call it staggered, okay, staggered. The, uh, on one side of the carbon atom, the bond have 120 degrees angle. This is 120 degrees angle, trigonal planar. And then toward the, uh, the hydrogen atoms on the other carbon, car, uh, carbon, this angle is basically 60 degrees. As a matter of fact, all the angles 60 degrees. This is called staggered conformation. So this is almost like a clock. Every two hours, you have one atom, but those atoms on the back side, on the other side of the carbon atom, and this we call staggered. If you rotate along this carbon-carbon bond, you have this, this we call the eclipsed conformation. This energy is highest because uh, between the hydrogen atoms, there is a serious um, repulsion among the bonding electrons. So the eclipse has highest energy and stagger has lowest energy. And so uh, if you show the, how does the bond angle relate to each other, the energy change, is, it shows it very nicely. Whenever we're going to stagger, have the lowest energy and eclipse has the highest energy. And because uh, there are six identical hydrogen atoms on the two carbon, uh, the energy height is exactly the same. Okay, so that's um, so the energy difference is about twelve kilojoule between the uh, crest and the uh, trough has about twelve kilojoule energy. At a room temperature, ninety-nine uh, percent of the molecules stay on the staggered. This you can easily done with a statistic using Boltzmann's. Uh, um, Boltzmann's distribution function to calculate. When you have high energies, the possibility is just smaller. With the propane, you have three carbons, and if you draw the human projection, you have one carbon is different from the others. You have one carbon has a one metal group, and the other two carbons has only uh, uh, all the rest of the hydrogen. This will cause a little difference in the energy, okay? Well, because uh, it has only one methyl group. So whenever this methyl group eclipses during the rotation, eclipses with other hydrogen on the other carbon, you have a high energy. And the energy gaps a little bit more just because uh, the uh, methyl group is bigger. We have a bigger, bigger group. It is a stronger repulsion with the other hydrogen, for example, this hydrogen. A stronger repulsion. The difference is not that big. Uh, with the butane, it becomes interesting. Butane, you have a, if you look at the, uh, along the carbon two and three in the middle bond, okay, for the butane, if you look at the middle bond, uh, the circles, the white circles along the middle bond, then you have a, each carbon has a one methyl group, okay. And each mark carbon has one methyl group, uh, the energy curve looks different. It is because when the two massive group fully eclipse, and each one has uh, three hydrogens, this will have the strongest repulsion between the two massive group. And that's what happens when you have two massive group fully eclipse, the energy is actually the highest. The other situations is when the uh, massive group Eclipse with the hydrogen of the other carbon. That's a, it's high, but not the highest energy. The lowest energy, okay, the lowest energy, that's important. This is the most stable conformation for butane, is when the uh, two metal group in the end type position, which means, uh, which means is exact. 
You got a wedge hydrogen here, that's hydrogen. And with two men's group in the N type position. It's almost like the trans in the uh, carbon carbon double bond, almost same as a trans. And this we call the anti. Anti, uh, the dihedral, it is at 180 degrees. Fully eclipsed, it is when you have this situation, the dihedral zero degrees means uh, just exactly overlap to that spot. Torsional strains. Um, so be aware of the uh, anti is most stable. And that's the reason why when you draw the line structures, most cases we will draw the zigzag because zigzag, you have the least uh, um, torsional strain, least the repulsion between the substituents, between the carbon and hydrogen atoms. And so these are, uh, when you have the real, with the hydrogen to the space, you can see the, uh, when they're with different angles, the torsion is different. This has a high torsion because too chunky, they are kind of uh, strongly repel, repel each other. And then we have a name for those, for the uh, two bigger LQ group. When these two have a 60 degrees, 60 degrees uh, dihedral, so 60 degrees, this is what we call a gouge. 60 degrees dihedral. So 60 degrees. And this is also 60 degrees, you have a gouge. Gouge and anti, we have used those to describe And so the energy, we really don't care about that much energy, but just keep in mind that there'll be the, when the uh, two LQ group in the um, eclipse position, uh, they have a very high torsion. Means they have a tendency to push away each other and relax, relax the, release the energy. And uh, naming, anti gauge or eclipse. So that's kind of very straightforward. And this is the, uh, you can see the two LQ groups have only 60 degrees torsional angle or dihedral, that's the gauge. This one's uh, two LQ group almost perfectly uh, overlap each other, that'd be the eclipse. And this, uh, this is actually kind of eclipse, but it's not a Matthew with Matthew eclipse. This is Matthew with hydrogen eclipse. The last one is anti. Okay, so that's basically, the, uh, this is the eclipse, but different from this eclipse. As you can see from the last slide, this is the Matthew, Matthew which is the biggest uh, groups on the eclipse position will have the strongest repulsion and the highest energy. This is second highest energy among the three eclipse structures. And so if I rate energy for the above conformations and the lowest will be this one, the number four will be lowest. And then um, you look for the, uh, um, you look for st staggered. And by the way, the gauge is also staggered. And a staggered always have a lower energy. The one and the four, both are staggered structures. Number four has a massive group, just have 180 degrees away from each other, have least torsion, energy and lowest. Number one have the uh, massive group 60 degrees. That has quite significant torsion. Uh, but the energy still is lower than the eclipse. Two and three are the, the eclipse. So number one will be second. And then between two and three, uh, the two bigger massive group have a zero degrees dihedral. That has the most strongest repulsion. And that'll be the, that'll be the highest energy. Okay, that means the number three will be the Number, number three will be the uh, lower bit among the two and three conformations. So finally, number two, because fully uh, zero degree dihedral between the massive group has the highest energy. 
Okay, cyclohexanes, cycloalkanes. The first part I go very quick, the angles. Uh, if you're interested to learn about the um, polygons, you kind of have to know the angles for each one. That's not a focus for this class. The uh, this is, uh, cyclopropane, cyclobutane, pentane, cyclohexane, cycloheptane, and uh, cyclo cyclooctane. The real structure is twisted, looks like a crown, just to keep in mind. Uh, among all the cycloalkanes, the smaller ring it is, you have a higher stress and a higher energy, which means highest, higher um, strain, we call them strain. And uh, you can see these are the measured from the heat of combustion per CH2 group. Okay, it's not the total heat of combustion. It is heat of combustion divided by the number of uh, methylene groups, the C2. This cyclopropane has three carbons. So whatever heat divided by three, heat of combustion divided by three. And uh, for the cyclobutane, the heat of combustion divided by four, we get this. And likewise for all the others. So you can see among all these cyclo, uh, cyclo uh, alkanes, cyclopropane has highest, uh, highest, and then the butane, and then pentane. Cyclohexane, it is the lowest, okay? It is the uh, lowest among all of them. And the others are roughly, roughly in the very similar range. That's what we find out from the cycloalkanes. I think we need to memorize the, uh, among the carbon, which is a three, four, five, six, among, the, among these four cycloalkanes, which one is the lowest, which one is highest. So why? The explanation is because uh, you can explain that in many ways, the hybridization will be probably the easiest because uh, each carbon is supposed to be the sp3 hybridization. The bond angle ideally should be 109.5 degrees. Uh, when you have a cyclopropane, the actual angle, it is uh, from the uh, line structure looks like 60 degrees and that's a very, very small. So that's basically, it make the pore uh, not a very good sigma bond. Okay, you, have, you, you don't have a very good sigma bound. The lineup is not very good. A poor overlap between the uh, two hybrid orbitals and uh, that makes energy higher than they are. Uh, cyclobutane, it's very similar. It's not good, uh, not good bound angle. The angle is actually not 90 degrees uh, because the actual molecules uh, is twisted. The molecule is twisted, not the uh, square a two-dimensional square. And the angle is 88 degrees. Oh, that's, that's interesting, even smaller. So you got a fairly, a lot of stress. You have very similar pore overlap among the bonds. And cyclopentane um, is fairly, it's very good, very good stability. Compared with cyclohexane, it's only a little bit more energy uh, per unit, five kilojoule higher than the uh, cyclohexane per uh, one methylene, the CH2 unit, CH2 unit. And the most stable conformation for cyclopentane is uh, its envelope. And if you have the models, you can easily build the models. But when you build the models, uh, you probably realize it's kind of hard to make this cyclopentane because one of the bond have a lot of stress. When you build the models, you realize this bond either is uh, slightly bent if you use plastics or a lot of stress if you use wood models. So that's the model stress when you build the models. It's uh, very similar to the reality how the molecules feel. The cyclohexane, it is the focus of this class. And uh, I have only about a half an hour. That's not enough for this topic. But I'll have to go as, uh, as quick as we can because most experience, you have to have the model in your hand and that becomes much easier to understand with the model, not so much with the word. That's why the uh, YouTube videos and you see how the molecule rotate, that make it easy to, um, to understand. As uh, the cyclohexane, the most stable conformation, it is the uh, chair conformation. In this conformation, all the bond angles are essentially 109.5 100, degrees. 
is a little bit different from the one that is because the bonding, each carbon have a two two bond with a carbon, and two bond with a hydrogen. So these four bonds are not quite exactly the same. So the bond angle, bond angle, it should be very close. Maybe not exact. Huh? And this is the most stable. We call the chair conformation. So the chair goes. Uh, you have a person sit on here. Your head here. It's like a beach chair, basically. A chair confirmation. And so that's the. And with this structure, um, you can look at the either. Okay, let me clean up. Okay, so with this structure, <clears throat> uh, look from left to right, a little bit downward. Okay, put your eyes here. And then you have a two bond exactly parallel, these two bond exactly parallel. And then you draw the Newman projection. That, that'll give you the um, Newman projection for a cyclohexane. And uh, each carbon, this is a, looks almost like normal. You have uh, one carbon and you have hydrogen here. Right? All the angles are 120 degrees. And this bond did not really show. This bond, there's a one hydrogen, there's one hydrogen close to me, and there's one hydrogen away from me. Okay, and we don't need to show that high, so those hydrogens, but that's what it looks like. And uh, you can see all the hydrogens are staggered, so that make it very low energy. We can understand why there's low energy because uh, there's a lot of staggered. If you look the other way, if you look at this angle, you'll see exactly the same, no difference. So from look the different angles, you got the same Newman projection. The this structure, if you make the bond a twist by the way all these bonds can can fairly freely rotate if you make the bond twist you can have a you have a we call it a, a boat structure this is called a boat structure this boat structure has some staggers uh, but there's some eclipse and that makes the energy higher than the chair conformation and so the um, the high energy is mainly come from, there's a part we call them, the repulsion between these two, between, between these two hydrogens, because these two are getting kind of close, that, there's a stress. And also um, there's some eclipse, eclipse, for example, these two. These two carbon-carbon bond are in the eclipse position. And likewise with the hydrogen, so these are hydrogen. Hydrogen, you have an eclipse, eclipse between these two. So there's a lot of high energy going on there. And so the energy is higher. Uh, so start from the chair conformation, we twist along the single bond. We have the, some other structures. And uh, uh, so you have the model, you can easily see that, see different, mo different structures. But this is the, uh, I get an animation from online. It shows you start from, start from chair, you twist one bond and becomes boat. Okay, so that's the chair to boat confirmation. We call it a chair um, ring twist or ring flip. And so draw chair confirmations. How to draw chair confirmations? The, uh, the drawing uh, takes some practice. But the very first step, you can draw a bound angle at any angle. This line, you can draw any angle. But keep in mind, you are to draw a um, tetrahedral eventually. Okay, with all the hydrogen, it should be tetrahedral. So the tetrahedral we're familiar with, most of us draw the tetrahedral with a wedge and dash like this. This is one tetrahedral, or you can make it upside down or whatever way. Um, if you start from based on this, then keep in mind, anytime we draw the lines, there's quite a few parallels in the ring. So the red highlights are the parallels. 
that's very important to make your structure it looks nice. Okay, so this these two are the parallel, and between these two parallel and these two parallel. And with this, um, we show the uh, hydrogens because the ring shows only carbon. To show hydrogens, each carbon is a tetrahedral, keep in mind. When you have this structure, the tetrahedral line to draw, start from here, start from here, to show the hydrogen, keep in mind, whichever the hydrogen you're gonna draw, this bond, you will draw a new bond. This bond, the angle is not random, it's not any angle. The bond you are gonna draw is gonna be parallel to these two if you draw this direction. Okay, so this will be parallel to these two bonds. And then at uh, this bond, this third bond, well, is tetrahedral. So if you want to show three, the last one has to go down. And this bond looks like not being parallel with any of those, any of those um, bonds on the ring. So we'll have a different name for those. But these we call them equatorial, equatorial, like the equator. This is axial because this bond parallel to the axis for the um, for the hexagon. If you look from above, this molecule looks like a hexagon, and uh, so that site it is the uh, axis. This axial equatorial bond will be parallel to the bond on the ring. Axial. Not much. It will be not parallel to any bond on the ring. And okay. Uh, the equatorial positions uh, for the cyclohexane, there are six carbons. Each carbon has one bond, will be the equatorial on the most stable conformation. Okay. So with the same, uh, with this molecule. They, there are six equatorial positions. All these blue are the equatorial. Equatorial, equatorial, equatorial. Uh, these both structures, the chair conformation with the, all the bond, it looks like intimidating. But uh, that's why you need to practice with, with model. Look at the model. With the chair conformation, you can see that equatorial fair easily. And the, the bond, this bond is not parallel to any of the carbon-carbon bond in the ring. So those are the axial, and there are six axials. There are three of the axial point to up, point to one direction, and the other three point to downward. So three up, three down. That's a cyclohexane with uh, all the bond. Uh, the cyclohexane in chapter six, there are two important drawing skills that you need to have. It's not very, very important for organic chemistry per se, uh, but for understanding the uh, molecules in the three dimension, the Newman projection and chair conformation. Chair conformation, including the axial equatorial. These are the two very important drawing skills you need to have. And in our quiz, there will be questions. You'll need to upload the picture that you draw the structure, new projection or um, chair. So use the zapping for practice. Okay. Very important, use zapping for practice. And uh, as we can see the chair, because of, uh, all the atoms or uh, groups are on the staggered position, the energy is the lowest, okay, the chair. Uh, because of free rotation, the uh, the ring can still flip. We, we call them flip. It's actually not flip. It is a ring. The ring twists along the bond, carbon carbon bond. And if you keep twisting and looking for the more stable conformation from one chair conformation, if you twist the bond, this whole entire structure can twist. Whatever in the axial can becomes equatorial. Okay, can become. So uh, from here to here, 
what happened is you twist this bond. And when you twist this bond, there's consequences. You will cause stress with the other bond. And so to release those stress, the bond keep flexing and all the bond keep rotating. Uh, it's complicated twist with model in the BZC. And the atom on the axial will, will be able to become the uh, equatorial. The barrier for the twisting, it is 45 kilojoule. This is kind of the activation energy for this, uh, for this transition. It's kind of activation energy. It's energy barrier to, uh, to overcome, to achieve the transition. Uh, as you can see from the, because the ring twist, it will go through the uh, eclipse conformation according to the Newman projection. And then you, all the other, because there are many other bumps will keep rotating. Each one try to achieve uh, the 105 point, 109.5 degrees. And then you eventually will achieve another chair. But in the chair, the axle becomes equatorial. And so, okay, rotation and Jordan Newman structures. Uh, there are many bound twisting, looks like complicated. Uh, to be better understand this, it is use a model. And so eventually from the equatorial can become the axial. So there's many bound twist and turn. Even this, you cannot, you cannot see the, um, there's bound rotate along this bound as well. There are many twisted. And those bound also have the twist in the back. After all the twisting and the molecule becomes a new chair, uh, but with the same subsidiary, it becomes axial. So cyclic hexane molecule is dynamic. It's dynamically keep changing. Uh, but what do we find out even though the cyclic hexane with substituent can freely rotate, freely take any positions, if there's no substituent, then this cyclic hexane keep twisting from chair to chair, and keep going forever. Uh, but what do we find out for? If there's a methyl group on the cyclic hexane, or some other, like an ethyl or propyl or butyl, uh, we notice the substituent on the ring have a preference for the equatorial position. Okay. Because when these two, uh, we measure only 5% chance Matthew on the axial position. 95% chance is on the uh, equatorial position. This is what we call a 1-3 diaxial strain. 1-3, uh, that means if we name this as number one, okay, when we name this compound, this compound will be uh, methyl cyclohexane. And the methyl is on the number one carbon. Number one, two, and three. Number three carbon. Or from here, one, two, and three. Either clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, in the, uh, in the three position, you have two hydrogens. Those two hydrogen will have the repulsive force with the methyl group. So that's the diagram shows you. There's a one, three repulsion between the X, which is, can be any alkyl group with uh, hydrogen atoms on the position three. And that will cause a stress. It is basically um, the, the occupied, the basic fight for the same space. Because there is a repulsion, that makes this uh, massive group on axial position less favorable. The massive group is better stay out of the way, take the equatorial, and then that will be uh, when the methyl group on the equatorial, and you can see the uh, whatever, there's hydrogen here, oh, hydrogen here. The methyl group will have only hydrogen to have a conflict. Whereas in this position, if you draw the Newman position, uh, the methyl group will be 60 degrees with this CH2. So the one three diaxial position can also be understood by using the 
it's kind of like a gulch position between these two is a gulch. Between the methyl group and the methylene group, which is this. So that's another way to understand the, uh, <clears throat> the repulsion. It is because uh, the alkyl group, which is a bigger in the gulch position. <clears throat> And so we can see the uh, these are when the X, the substituent, changing from chlorine all the way to even bigger, uh, bigger groups, the preference are different. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So when you have um, when the X substituent of the chlorine, chlorine is only single atom. It's a bigger atom, but it's very it's only one atom. Uh, with one atom, the one three e repulsive force, there's only two kilojoules. And so you can see the, uh, uh, the interaction, the repulsive force being smaller, you have uh, a slight preference for the equatorium. Okay, so the ratio is about two to one ratio because the energy difference between the equatorial axial difference is only two kilojoules. When, as you can see, the energy uh, repulsive force become increased, uh, the preference for the equatorial become uh, increased very dramatically, okay? Hydroxyl group, there are only two atoms on the axial position. You got a higher energy, stronger preference for the equatorial. Um, so this is the, uh, uh, this is start from, we're getting familiar with the methyl group. So it's a methyl group. This is a massive group. Uh, so the preference repulsive force is uh, almost eight. This is acyl. Acyl group supposed to have more atoms, but rem the, remember the massive group can freely rotate along this bond. So adding one, one more carbon, it did not increase the repulsive force much. The difference is very small. Uh, and so, when you have a, um, this is isopropyl, by the way, this isopropyl. Isopropyl group on the ring of the cyclohexane is much bigger, and you have much stronger repulsive force with the uh, number three hydrogen. And that's a fairly significant increase by one, one kilojoule per mole. Because the isopropyl position, it is uh, when you draw the ring structure for the chair. Isopropyl group, let's say we're putting here. And you will have uh, two massive groups. The two massive groups, let's say we try to minimize repulsion and that will take this and that position uh, with hydrogen being here. So this, the isopropyl group is fairly large. It's much bigger than the acyl or methyl. Uh, the repulsive force, it'll be stronger with, with the hydrogen or the whole methylene group. So isopropyl is stronger and you have stronger preference for the equatorial, as you can see from the percentage. Still not much difference. This is about 19 to one. This is about 16 to one. And this is about 30, um, 30, 32. 32 to one ratio between these two. <clears throat> uh, the third butyl, third butyl is dramatic, uh, stronger preference. The reason because third butyl has a very, very big, very bunky, uh, chunky, a very strong repulsion with the uh, number three hydrogens. Uh, uh, there's no, st no structures. So let me show you on the, um, on the whiteboard. So third butyl, what it looks like, and this is cyclohexane. Uh, if you have, if you have third butyl, you have a third butyl means uh, there are four carbons total here, and the one carbon link with the ring. There are three more carbons. There's a methyl group. Uh, the key to draw the uh, tetrahedral is anti-parallel. You draw this 
parallel to that. And then I need to draw another one parallel to this, the counter parallel, the, the anti-parallel. And draw the last one, of course, will be here. Because tetrahedral. So that's the turtle butyl when you show all the atoms. And you can see uh, each carbon has three more hydrogens. So this terbutyl looks like a, a big fat broccoli, a big fat broccoli. Okay, uh, I'm having a hard time to move the because zoom control. Anyway, there's a big chunk back there. So all of these have very strong repulsion with the position three, position three hydrogen. Because they, they are getting very close, too close. Okay, so have very strong repulsion. That's why you see the energy uh, now becomes now becomes a twenty-three, almost twenty-three kilojoules. You got a very strong preference for the uh, equatorial. So this is when you have only one substituent on the cyclohexane, and that shows you the preference being more bulky substituent on the ring. I have a stronger preference on the equatorial position. And so that's the, we need to memorize this. Fairly easy, organic, organic chemistry is fairly easy to memorize. You don't need a calculation to really uh, understand those concepts. Make sure your mind will be able to rotate the molecules or rotate some of the bond. So what are the consequences uh, if the Cyclohexane have a two substituents. Okay, the two substituent, you need to remember the preference in the last slide. The bigger groups, the bigger substituent have stronger preference on the equatorial. And that means um, if these two, if a two substituent have a fight, and which means uh, if one substituent on the A position, uh, on the equatorial, the, the other one has to be on the, um, one stay on the equatorial, the other one has to be on the A, if there's a fight, okay, both will fight for equatorial. Then whichever stronger, uh, have a stronger, the one three repulsion, or the, uh, the one we saw here, the lower it is, have a stronger preference, or they have more power to stay on the equatorial. And so that's the uh, keep in mind, keep in mind. So here we have, uh, this is the uh, cyclohexane with uh, chlorine on the wedge, methyl on the, on the dash. Uh, this, if you just look at this, it's kind of hard to imagine which one on the equatorial, which one uh, was on the um, axial. So you need to draw the, the line structure with the 3D, okay, the real line structure, with the uh, tetrahedral in mind. This is, uh, this is structure looked from the top. It's not helpful for you to understand the equatorial ax axial. You need to draw the chair conformation. And then uh, whatever the corn is close to me, stay, uh, stay above, and which means hydrogen on the equatorial. And uh, this, the uh, hydrogen in this carbon, hydrogen close to me, massive group is away from me. So, uh, this whole molecule, if you look sideways, okay, this molecule will have this kind of layout. You have methyl group down, chlorine on the on the uh, axial, both methyl and the chlorine on the axial. Uh, so you have a uh, this is direct translation. If you make the chlorine on the axial, methyl also on the axial. You look from, you look this molecule um, from our position. When you look at the computer screen, you translate to that. Well, remember the molecules uh, cyclohexane can have the ring flip, can twist all the bond, and the axial can become equatorial. So when that happens, the molecule becomes this, becomes this. Now the uh, chlorine star from axial becomes equatorial. And the same thing happened with uh, axial. Axial methyl 
becomes equatorial methyl. This is the equatorial methyl. It's kind of hard to see, but this is obvious. Chlorine is equatorial. When this happens, um, both become equatorial. This is highly, highly variable. It's a win-win situation. There's no fight between the uh, two groups. When, um, when the two groups both on the equatorial, that's a perfect resolution. The win-win. Both become more comfortable, less stress. And when both on axial, that's both in the uncomfortable position. Okay, so that's the first first scenario is when the two group both um, on the uh, can take the axial position or both can take equatorial, then both will take equatorial. This is a very very lot of stress never happened. What if it's two substituent have conflict, which means if one take the E position, the other has to take a uh, A position. Then this is the rule. The last slide on the slide number 50, you saw the energy uh, getting bigger for the, um, the groups in the lower in the table. They have the priority to take an E position. It's just because when they take an E position, they will eliminate more stress. We live in the most stress. So the one the bigger, chunkier, has more power to decide who's in say E or A position. And uh, there's a, there's more practice on those. I don't have much practice on this um, PowerPoint, but if you look at the um, look at the Zapfen homework, there's more practice on which one's more stable. And as you can see from the quiz, there's more practice on this, on the um, E or A position. In organic chemistry, uh, in the big picture, the cyclic thing is not super important. But with this part, you get the experience of uh, visually manipulating molecules and get familiar with uh, how the molecules will change. Uh, it's different experience. So, to understand the, uh, when you have more than one substituent on the cyclohexane, and how does that uh, affect the, uh, which one is more preferred? We need to get into the, understand the system trends, isomerism in uh, cycloalkanes, particularly cyclohexanes. So when the two substituent on the same side of the ring, we call them cis. So very similar as alkene, when we learn about alkene, cis and trans, very similar. This is the cis. And this is the uh, alkene, the uh, substituent on the opposite side of the ring. That would be the trans. Okay, so it's very easy to understand. And these two cannot become each other, or cannot translate into each other uh, for obvious reasons. It cannot really become each other. They will stay, cis will stay cis, trans will stay trans. That is very different from the alkene. And alkene, if you remember the alkene, between cis and trans, it can be, um, the conversion can be achieved at a high temperature, but not with uh, uh, cycloalkanes. Cycloalkanes, you need to break the bond and reform the bond to, to achieve the cis and trans conversion. Oh, we are, this is toward the end of the chapter, actually. And uh, uh, let me just wrap up this chapter with some reactions. Um, this reaction in the organic chemistry is not super important, but they do have the reaction about alkanes. Later, if I have time, I might uh, go through more about the um, season trends, how they preferred. So the reactions about a methane, uh, the alkane, does not have many reactions. That is interesting for chemists uh, because they are super saturated. It's very hard to change it to a different molecule to make some new product. So the most common reaction we discuss about the alkanes are the uh, halogenation reaction, or for example, here's a chlorination of reaction. Chlorination reactions is alkane reacted with an element, halogen, and um, 
under some high energy conditions like um, heat or UV light, it will form the, um, uh, we call them alkyl halides because of one of the halogen attached to the carbon. And so this is what we call a methyl, it's methyl group with uh, chlorine, it's a methyl chloride. Sounds like an ionic compound, but it's a covalent compound. And uh, it can have more consequential, the uh, sequential reactions. The methyl chlorine can further react, become bichloromethane, trichloromethane, and all, all the way to carbon tetrachloride. So these are the reactions. Uh, for the reactions, when you have a, a longer, more carbons in the, uh, in the alkane, then whichever carbon has a fewer hydrogens have a stronger preference in the reaction. And so what we find out is for this is the propane. Okay, the propane, you have three carbons. Two carbons are basically the L, the methyl group. This is the carbon have a two, only two hydrogens. And so if you talk about a reaction product, the chance of forming the um, one halogen on the carbon should have a higher chance on the end from these two methyl group because there are six hydrogen here. And in the middle, there are only two hydrogens. So when among those eight hydrogens to react with hydrogen, one of those six hydrogens got to react, it should have a higher chance. The chance is three times more than these two hydrogens react. Uh, but what we find out in the reaction is, what we find out the, the middle hydrogen have a, uh, are actually the major product. This is a major product. It's 60 percent as a 60 percent of the mono halogenation reaction are the uh, the second carbon react, and this terminal carbon. Even though there are six hydrogens, the product come from those reactions is only 40 percent. And so. The reason later we're going to explain that, but now for this chapter, uh, we just need to know. There's a higher tendency for the carbon with fewer hydrogens to react uh, in this halogenation reaction. And uh, tertiary carbon, that means you have a carbon that has three hydrogens attached. So this would be tertiary carbon. Secondary, it is, um, two carbon attached. This is a secondary. And so that's the, that's the uh, reaction reactivities. By the way, in organic chemistry, now you start seeing some organic chemical reactions. This is just the, the first example in the organic chemical reactions. The organic chemical reactions tend to have a uh, multiple product. And uh, we focus on what is the main product? And later we will discuss and try to understand and use, use the knowledge to, to influence, to understand which one is the main product. And then we, we, can, we should be able to predict which one is the main product. Uh, so for this chapter of reactions, this is the first organic chemical reaction. We should be aware of the, uh, the carbon with the fewer hydrogens have a higher tendency to react and give you the major product. Give you the major product. And so this is an example about predicting the monobromination. Monobromination means there's only one halogen uh, become part of the alkane, become the product. And so cyclohexane, we have a molecule like this, cyclohexane. Methyl cyclohexane does not have a number because there's only one substituent. You don't need to give a number for that. So that's the line structure for uh, methyl cyclohexane. And uh, if this one react with uh, bromine and give you monobromination, so we have uh, different possibilities. We can have this one add bromine or this one bromine because uh, this carbon has one hydrogen, so it can still add a bromine. Or you can have uh, this one or this one or this one. 
Uh, these two are the mirror image. These two are the same as these two carbons. So it does not, not really give you a new product. But you have five possibilities. Five possibilities, which one is the most, is should be the main product. We need to look at the, how many hydrogens on each carbon. Okay, the hydrogens, let me change my in color. The hydrogens, um, here, this carbon have two bound with two carbons, so two hydrogen here. This one likewise, two hydrogens. Same with this. How many hydrogen on this carbon? Anyone, can anyone help me? How many hydrogen on this carbon? One, two, it cannot be three. How many hydrogen on this carbon? One. one. How about this one? How many hydrogen here? This is only one bond with the carbon, so three, three hydrogens. And so which one's the main product? You look for the carbon with the fewest hydrogens. So this. This will give you the main product. And the reaction product will be eliminate, eliminate the hydrogen, substitute the hydrogen with the bromine. And that will be the final product. So if I name this compound, it will be one bromo, one, one methyl cyclohexane. That's a product. And the uh, reason because this one is, uh, uh, this carbon has bound with more carbons. The actual reason we can, uh, we want to understand that in the uh, chapter 11. Okay. So that'd be all for the side hexanes. We went pretty quick on the human projection and the chair confirmations. It take, maybe takes a lot of practice on those. Okay, the structure is a little off. I should, it's not good. Um, we draw that. Okay, we draw this. Should make it a, show the uh, line up kind of parallel with the bound that is already in the ring. Okay, let's say we have this. The name of this compound will be um, cis 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. Cis, because they are in the same direction, same direction of the ring. Uh, what about the chair conformation with those methyl group on the axial or equatorial? So to draw that, um, we need to show the hydrogen. Hydrogens will be the dash, okay? And then we draw the conformation of the chair. The chair, you start with this. Okay? You have a one line longer than the others is better because the longer bone means the closer to you and the one that is shorter is away, away from you. And they have this. Uh, your chair conformation to begin with, it should start with this. Start with this. And then the following, you have three more bones. Those three bones, it'll be parallel to uh, one of these three bones, will be parallel. And it's uh, away from the other. You know, one bond in between, the parallel. So start from here, I draw the bond should be parallel to this. And start from here, I draw a bond parallel to this. And finally, last bond parallel to the, to the third, to the last bond. So that's the chair confirmation. That's good enough. And so uh, let's say this one, the, uh, um, this, carbon becomes this. That's how normal people draw. The, draw the, from the line structure to the chair confirmation. You pick this one as the uh, rightmost, rightmost atoms. And um, you can see this massive group point up and that'll be the, in the axial, the uh, axial position. This is massive group here. And the hydrogen will be here. Okay, and this one will be on my right hand side, should be here, should be here. And as you can see, uh, you have a, for this atom to draw a bond, again, you look for parallel. You look for the bond, the, the bond you draw should be parallel to the 
these two bomb. That'll give you the equatorial. These two bomb parallel. And the last bomb, because tetrahedral, uh, it should be parallel, the anti-parallel to this. Okay. Colin, my question is, which one will be the methyl group with these two? Which one's methyl group? Methyl group here or methyl group here? Can you guys follow me, kind of? Okay, remember this methyl group is closer to me, which means I should be more upper. The hydrogen is away from me, so after I rotate, it should, more, should be more down. So this is hydrogen. This is a methyl group. So from this cis uh, one two dimethyl, that gave me a chair conformation looks like this. And now we can see which group on the equatorial, which group on the axial. So when you draw like this, this would be the methyl on the equatorial, this methyl on the axial. Because these two are the equal power when they're fighting for the equatorial. And so that means this is one of the two possibilities. In one case, you have the um, one methyl on the axial, the other one on the equatorial. And the other confirmation I can draw, um, the, uh, I will flip, rotate this bond to make this methyl on the equatorial, make this one as equatorial. And the hydrogen down. This is the methyl group. Now this methyl group, which is, uh, let's say this number one methyl group, and the number two methyl group. The number one will be on the equatorial. And what happened to this one? Okay, this one, since uh, that is the, um, uh, this group, it is, it is, okay, this atom actually will be here. Okay, this become here. And um, with this atom to draw the bond, it should be first one bond parallel to this. And the last bond, it will be anti-parallel to this one. Okay. But where's my methyl group? Okay. This uh, methyl group is point up. Hydrogen is a it's going away, it's a down. After rotation, after ring twist, mass group should stay, still stay on the top, above the ring. The hydrogen stay low. And so that's what happened when you have this ring twist, after twisting becomes, there's, you see the exchange. The number one mass group now become equatorial. And number two mass group, now it's here, it is the axial. That's a switching between axial and uh, uh, equatorial with a di-substituted uh, cyclohexane. Okay, we are running out of time for the uh, explanation. We already over time the explanation. So the more discussions in the future, you can watch more YouTube videos, do some zapping.